It's now time for member statements. I recognize the member for University of Rosedale. Wow. Thank you, Speaker. Ahaba Collegiate, Central Tech, Central Toronto Academy, Palmerston, Rosedale, Montrose, Kensington, Charles Fraser. These are just a few of the many wonderful schools in the riding of University of Rosedale, a riding I'm proud to represent at Queen's Park. Our school community, our parents, our teachers, our children, the teenagers, we believe in building a quality public education system right here in Ontario. And so many in our school community are angered by the Ford government's cuts to education, the decision to drastically increase class sizes in high schools, to slash up to 10,000 teaching positions, to ignore the repairs that are begging for attention at every school across our province, from the too hot classrooms in summer to the broken washrooms to the aging boilers, and then to the, the constant threats to the future of JKSK, which are such critical learning years for our kids. There's this feeling that this government doesn't care about us and the quality of education we want for our children. And so many of us are standing up to say, no, thank you. There's a lot that we can fight for that's better than this. And we encourage you to join us, to join the high school students at Harbour Collegiate that are organising a school-wide walkout on April 4. The teachers and parents who are organising a family-friendly rally at Queen's Park at 12 p.m. on Saturday, April 6, and to join us on a community canvas on Sunday, April 12, at 12 p.m. in our riding to talk to residents about what's at stake and what we can do to fight for our kids' education. Thank you. Point of order, the member for Ottawa West Nepean. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. I apologize for being here a little bit late for this, but I just want to introduce a very special pair of guests we have. We have Senator Jim Munson and his lovely wife, Jeanette, here in the gallery today. Jim is a champion for individuals with developmental disabilities, along with his wife, and wonderful to have them here today. Welcome. Member statements. The member for Markham Unionville. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Recently, the Premier and myself attended a site tour of the IBM Toronto Software Lab in my riding of Markham Unionville. We were given the chance to see and understand the current endeavor being pursued by IBM, like self-autonomous vehicle technology, and was personally amazed by their work. Following the tour, the Premier and I participate in a roundtable discussion with IBM executives regarding the benefits of a continued and steadfast relationship between their company and our province. Besides being a world-renowned company, IBM has a strong presence in my riding, along with many other high-tech firms. These companies chose Markham and Ontario as their venue for their business because of our intelligence and extraordinary skilled workforce. Mr. Speaker, our government has recently announced reforms to education in the province, which will not only enhance the learning capability of students from kindergarten to grade 12, but will also set up our children for future success. Helping our young students develop a better grasp on mathematics and understanding the vast potential in STEM sectors at an early age. This will give them the tools and information they need to excel in the workforce. Our global competitiveness is something that we have to continue to work on and not take for granted. And I'm proud to stand by our Minister of Education recent announcement, which I believe helping us to maintain and surpass the goal. Thank you. Member Statements, the member for London North Centre. Thank you, Speaker. I'd like to acknowledge that this Sunday marks the International Trans Day of Visibility. This day exists to celebrate our trans friends and amplify their voices. Unfortunately, the government is making it harder and harder for the trans community to be seen and heard, given the many barriers trans Ontarians face, particularly in our health care and education system. Matt is a 16-year-old student in my riding and is struggling to pay for the costly surgery he requires. Matt's mother, Tara, was shocked to learn they would have to travel from London to Mississauga and pay $9,000 for his surgery. LGBTQ students are dismayed that this government has delayed teaching gender expression until grade eight, 
when we know our trans students need support and acceptance from their peers long before that. The cancellation of the basic income pilot project and new difficulties for accessing OSAP have affected constituents of London North Centre, like Jay. The trans community has to face these financial and social barriers far too often, including your preferred pronouns, such as he, him, or his, on a name tag is a simple way to let the trans community know you stand with them. As the Trans Day of Visibility approaches, new group Democrats vow to continue to fight for trans affirmative health care and an inclusive curriculum that acknowledges and celebrates Ontario's vibrant trans community. Thank you. Member Statements, the member for King Bond. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Today I rise to recognize two historic events that are set to take place on April 1st that will drastically have drastically different effects on the people of this province. On Monday, our provincial government will celebrate the end of Ontario's costly, burdensome and ineffective Drive Clean program. Announced in September, this change will put $40 million back into the pockets of Ontarians. This is the mandate our government was elected on, and we're going to see it through to make life more affordable for working families in this province. Moreover, and to contrast, Mr. Speaker, on Monday, we'll also see the introduction of a punishing and regressive Trudeau carbon tax. This tax will raise the prices on everything, from gas you use to heat your home to the fuel you drive, you use to drive your kids to hockey practice. Mr. Speaker, this is a tax that will raise the prices on everything. Now, while our government is taking action to support the a climate of jobs and growth and create prosperity for families and workers in this province. In contrast, the Trudeau Liberals are raising taxes, creating more red tape and impeding the job hopes of young people in this country. So, colleagues, we are working under the leadership of our Premier and this Cabinet and the entire Progressive Conservative team to put the province back on tack, to create better jobs, to grow this economy and to make life affordable for every single Ontarian. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Thank you. Member Statements. The member for Algoma, Manitoulin. Well, thank you, Speaker. I want to thank the staff and management team at the North Shore Health Network and the Northeast Lynn for their tireless work throughout the evacuation situation at the Blind River Hospital. Over the span of two weeks, these individuals quickly coordinated plans to relocate patients and residents, organized snow removal efforts, and ensured patients and residents could return to a safe Blind River Hospital. Northern Ontario winter conditions can lead to many unforeseen circumstances. This is especially true this year with the multiple roof collapses and near collapses in many communities across my riding and across Northern Ontario. When a concern was flagged at the Blind River Hospital, efforts began to ensure patients and staff were safe. I would like to thank the hospitals and long-term care homes that lent a hand, welcomed those relocated from Blind River and ensured they received proper care. From Little Current, Espanola, Elliott Lake, Richards Landing and Sault Ste. Marie, you continue to demonstrate how compassionate our communities are. No one should have to worry uh, about their safety when entering a hospital, restaurant, community centre, and we must work together to ensure situations like this do not become a regular occurrence. Northern infrastructure faces unique challenges, and this winter has offered us many learning opportunities. In it, reassuring to know it is reassuring to know how diligent the North Shore Health Network and its allies, and what I mean by allies is community members that open up their homes to take in their loved ones as well, responded in this challenging situation. Je salue. I take my hat off to you. I congratulate you. Member statements. Member statements, the member for Carleton. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Mr. Speaker, on Saturday, March 23rd, I had the distinct pleasure of welcoming the Premier of Ontario to the beautiful riding of Carleton as he joined me for a tour of the Osgood Care Centre in Metcalf. I want to thank Lori Norris Dudley, the President and CEO of the Osgood Care Centre, Dave Eggett, the Chair of the Osgood Care Centre, and Gino Melito, the Chair of the Osgood Ward Business Association, for helping me organize a fantastic visit of their facilities for the Premier. The Osgood Care Centre is a not-for-profit, long-term care home in the riding, often regarded as one of the finest in the province, and it is one of the jewels of Carleton, Mr. Speaker, a place that becomes a new home for residents and their families, where they and their family members are welcomed with open arms. It was so great to see the joy on the faces of the residents, frontline workers, 
volunteers, staff, and key community stakeholders who have been involved in the Osgood Care Centre for decades when they had an opportunity to speak with the Premier and grab a few photos. I particularly like the photo that I took with Vera Mitchell, who I've adopted as my grandmother, and the Premier, one of us flanking her on either side. Mr. Speaker, I would like to thank the Premier for coming to Carleton and joining me for a tour of such a great facility. Since his visit, I have been receiving a seemingly endless flow of support and appreciation for the Premier from my constituents. So, to the Premier of Ontario, I just want to say thank you so much and please come back to Carleton. You're welcome anytime. Thank you. Thank you very much. The member for Parkdale High Park. Thank you, Speaker. Imagine a child is sitting in a classroom on a cold winter day with 40 other classmates. It's crowded. It's hard to learn with the mittens and the bulky winter coat they're wearing because the school furnace broke down. Again. They're thirsty but forgot their water bottle at home and can't drink the water from the fountain because the school pipes have lead in them. They're trying hard to concentrate. They're trying to listen to the teacher and understand the lesson. It looks fun, but they just don't quite get it. They tried raising their hand, but they sit at the back of the room in the middle. The teacher tried to get to everyone, but they didn't see the child. With thousands fired, teachers are stretched thinner than ever. Students just don't seem to get the one-on-one -on -one support anymore. The bell rings. Class is over. The child still doesn't understand the lesson. They used to be able to go to after-school tutoring program, but that too has been cut, like many other supports that were available. Speaker, this will be the reality for students in our public schools under this Conservative government. Instead of investing in our children, the Ford government is making deeper cuts. They're taking a billion dollars out of our public education system and giving it as tax cuts to big businesses and the wealthy. We need to give our children more opportunities, not less. Public schools are a public trust. It belongs to the people of Ontario, not Premier Ford. Parents, educators, students, and people across this province, we stand together. We will not allow anyone to destroy our public education system. Thank you. Thank you very much. The member for Etobicoke Centre. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. And on a more optimistic note, every year on April 2nd, Pope John Paul II Day is celebrated throughout Canada. Pope John Paul II, born Karol Joseph Wojtyła in Poland, served as the pontiff of the Roman Catholic Church from October 1978 until his death on April 2, 2005. He was widely recognized as a leading figure in the history of the Roman Catholic Church and in the world and played an influential and vital role in promoting international understanding and peace. Pope John Paul II loved to travel to spread that message. He visited Canada for the first time in 1984, later in 1987, and again in 2002. His last visit to Canada was dedicated to the celebration of World Youth Day that was held here in Toronto. That year, my family and I traveled from Ottawa to see the People's Pope in Toronto. John Paul II visited many countries promoting international peace and interfaith dialogue and played one of the key roles in helping to dismantle the grip of communist regime, regimes in Central and Eastern Europe. Today, in his memory and to celebrate his life achievements, together with other MPPs, we held a ceremony here in Queen's Park unveiling his portrait. I would like to take this opportunity to thank former Member of Parliament, Vladislav Lizan, Ted Opitz, and of course, Chris corwin Konchitsky for making John Paul II Day in Canada a reality. The legacy of John Paul II will never be forgotten, and his life will continue serving as an inspiration for generations to come. Thank you very much. Member Statements, the member for Mississauga, Aaron Mill. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Over the weekend, I was a guest speaker in the 9th International Coptic Convention hosted by the Dutch Coptic Association in Amsterdam. Some of the topics discussed were integration of newcomers, second generation in identity challenges, and terrorism against minorities. I was proud to present our Canadian model, to present how Canada 
and our great province of Ontario are a good example of effective integration of newcomers by embracing multiculturalism and the acceptance and respect of all cultures. Mr. Speaker, one of the main challenges the world faces today is tourism. It is an issue that we need to tackle with care and promptness as it affects the lives of all of us. Every necessary step should be taken and all actions should be adopted to eliminate the threat. We have to keep our province safe, not for, just for us, Mr. Speaker, but for generations to come. And it must start with each one of us Ontarians. How we view each other, how we respect each other, and how we treat each other. At the end, the goal is not to tolerate one other, but to love and live with one other under one country and one province. Mr. Speaker, I'm honored and privileged to be part of this great government that works diligently each and every day to make our province the best place to live in, not only in Canada, but in the whole world. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Thank you very much. Report